Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, after um, we spent some time introducing the concept of a vector, well, let's try to analyze what exactly we can do with this, what its characteristics, etc. So, today's lecture will be about uh, one of two main uh, characteristics uh, of the vector. The main characteristics are magnitude and the direction. So today we will talk about magnitude and uh, considering that the vectors um, uh, represent certain physical or geometrical quality of some object, um, we can talk about the length of the vector basically. So the magnitude as, as a philosophical concept is represented in the length of the vector. Now if vector is represented graphically like this particular um, arrow-headed segment, um, the length must be measured in certain units. So, for instance, this particular vector represents a speed. Well, speed can be measured in meters per second, or uh, miles per hour, or whatever else. So, somewhere, we should have a unit of length which is equal to, let's say, one meter per second. And then, depending on the lengths in these units, this geometric representation of the vector uh, has certain lengths, like 5.7, for instance. Um, it means the speed is 5.7 meters per second. That's what exactly this represents. Now, um, this is kind of trivial and easy. Now, let's talk about um, the analytical uh, representation of the vectors as, as tuples, as um, ordered set of numbers which are related to coordinate system let's say we are talking about two dimensional vectors so this vector has certain coordinates a, b and uh, the tuple a comma b represents the vector because it represents the end point of um, of a segment which is originated at point zero zero obviously and so this particular um, segment uh, represents both the magnitude which is represented in its length and direction which is represented basically by the direction from the point zero to point a comma b on the coordinate plane. Now, considering we know only a b about this particular vector, we don't have it visually, geometrically, we don't have anything, um, we still have to determine its lengths. Well, but let's think about what is a coordinate system. A coordinate system is something which also has certain units of measurement on each on each axis, right? So the unit of measurement is given because the coordinate system is given. And what are these numbers A and B? Well, these are the lengths of the projections of our point, the end point of the vector, to the corresponding axis which make up the coordinate uh, uh, axis. So, this particular uh, segment, which is a projection onto the x-axis, is equal to 3 point something, and this particular projection on the point, uh, on the uh, y-axis, is 1 point something. So, what we know is, maybe we don't know the lengths of this particular segment, but we do know it's two projections on two orthogonal um, axes. Now, obviously we should use the theorem, uh, Pythagorean theorem, to, to find the lengths, right? So, this piece is equal to A, this piece is equal to B, so the length is equal to square root of a square plus b square. Because this is the hypotenuse and these are two categories. So, 
what I want to, uh, what, what I want, what I want to do, what I want to do, what I want to um, actually say that this is the formula for the lengths. Well, this is a two-dimensional case. Well, let's just spread it around. What if it's a one-dimensional vector? Well, one-dimensional vector is uh, a vector which is represented on one particular single one-dimensional line. And again, there are uh, units of measurements here. And vector is, again, from zero to some point. Let's say to this point. Or to this point, doesn't really matter. So in this in this particular case, the coordinate itself, well, in this case, it's 2.7. If um, uh, the vector is directed uh, towards the negative side, it will be minus something. So what would be the length? Well, the absolute value of this number, right? So in one dimensional case, length is equal to absolute value of uh, the number which represents this is a one the one tuple, so to speak, one dimensional uh, vector in its analytic representation. By the way, these two formulas are not really different because you can always put it like this. This is the same thing, right? So if one coordinate, it's square root of this one coordinate. If it's two coordinates, it's square root of sum of two coordinates. And now, obviously, we will go to three coordinates. And you will see that things is very much similar. OK, the vector in the three-dimensional space. This is x, this is y, this is z. This is our point where the vector ends. Now this point can be projected onto the xy plane. So if this is a, b, c, then this will be A, this would be B, and uh, and this would be C. So imagine X zero Y is a horizontal plane. Now the uh, z axis goes upwards. So from this point, I'm projecting to the x y uh, uh, plane. So this point is a projection of this point here. Now what's the coordinates of this point, by the way? A B zero, right? And this height from the point itself to its projection on the um, xy plane is actually the third coordinate. So this is c. This is the same length. So again, this piece is equal to b. This piece is equal to a, which is this one. And this piece is equal to C. So what's the length of OA? OA. Now, the projection is B. And projection of B to these two are, let's say, C and D. Now, OA is a hypotenuse of a triangle A, B, O. So A is above uh, the plane, B is its projection, so O, B would be perpendicular to, so this is uh, the right angle. 
So OA square uh, is equal to AB square plus OB square. Now, OB square, now this is the hypotenuse, and this angle is the right angle, right? Because this is the projection onto this, uh, onto this axis. So, uh, AB square plus, instead of OB square, again, Pythagorean theorem, I will use OC square plus BC square plus this. So this angle is right angle. If you look at this from the top, right, it's a projection, which means we are uh, directing the perpendicular. And now, what is this? AB square is basically C square, the third coordinate. Now, OC, OC is our A square. And BC, same as OD, is B squared. So again, we look at this and we see exactly the same thing, that the length of the vector is equal to square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. So this is a typical um, situation with all the vectors, regardless of the dimensionality. With one vector, uh, with one tuple representing a one-dimensional vector, we had the square root of its one and only coordinate. In two cases, in two-dimensional case, the two tuple a b. Um, so the length is square root of a square plus b square. So again, it's sum of squares of coordinates. And in three case, in, in three-dimensional case, exactly the same thing. So basically. Using this, using this consideration, um, we can expand the definition of the length of the vector to any dimensionality. Now, I mentioned to you that vector can, for instance, represent the um, um, oil refinery, for instance, where all the parameters which, which are controlling the oil refineries are basically um, uh, numerical components of this 100-dimensional tuple representing the, uh, the state of the, of, of the refinery. So the vector can be in 100 dimensions, right? So how to calculate the magnitude of this? Well, to tell you the truth, in, uh, in, in case of oil refinery, it's very difficult to think about meaning of the vector. Um, uh, meaning of the length, rather, of the vector and direction. I mean, this space is not uniform. I mean, one component can be, let's say, a pressure and another a temperature. How can you combine together pressure and temperature? It's really hard to do. However, in some cases, when components are not so drastically different, then we probably can think about the meaning of the, uh, of, of the, of the length of the vector. But in any case, from the mathematical standpoint, which is a pure abstraction, we can always introduce something like this. So if vector has the components, we can always think about the length, which is equal to the square root of sum of their squares. So in this case, it does make sense. So, Basically, this is the definition of the lengths for all these um, strange situations. But in one, two, and three dimensions, um, it's quite an obvious thing that the formula is exactly what it is. And that's why it was expanded to other dimensions as well. Well, okay, so right now we basically know what the length is regardless of the way how we represent the vector. And we know about the geometric representation as just, you know, an arrow-headed um, segment. With a certain unit of measurement, you can just measure the lengths of the segment geometrically. Or, in case it's represented as a tuple, then something like this would be the formula to, um, to represent the, uh, the length of the vector, which means we know what is the magnitude 
uh, of this particular vector, what is the magnitude of the of the certain physical or, or a real um, uh, object this vector represents, whether it's a speed or a force or anything like this. This is the strength of the force or the real speed of the velocity, something like this. Okay, um, so this is a preliminary lecture about the lengths. Uh, probably there are certain problems which I will think about and uh, if I will come up with interesting problems, I will just, you know, put something in, 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 in as, as a lecture. Um, meanwhile, you are obviously invited to take a look at the, everything else, whatever exists on Unisor, uh, unisor.com, and um, um, take a little bit more uh, time to register, to um, get engaged in um, enrollment in certain classes, and then you will be able to, to take exams, which is very uh, useful, and you can take any number of exams and uh, any number of times each exam until you will reach the perfection. So, thanks very much, and good luck.